All right, everyone, that is Vice President Kamala Harris uh, in Mexico City for her first solo foreign tour. Um, she visited Guatemala. She visited Mexico. She held uh, meetings with the presidents of both of those countries. She's now giving a press conference about a good 25 minutes in. It was almost a 30-minute press conference in which the vice president discussed policy extensively. Uh, policy ideas and agreements and commitments that she was able to achieve during this visit. Um, it's been a very monumental two days. She's gotten a lot done. I want to go through some of these policies, but I, I do want to say one thing. This is a, a, a perhaps unpopular opinion uh, in the business right now, but I think we need to have some perspective. There are seven countries in Central America. There's another dozen countries and two uh, sort of territories uh, in South America. We're talking about 433 million people in South America, something like, what, 44 million people in Central America. The United States southern border with Mexico is not the only important issue that matters to the world. Those seven countries have a long history with the United States, much of it troubling. The United States used much of Central America as essentially a giant plantation. Google the United Fruit Company. We have a long, sordid, torrid history with this region. The history does not begin at the border where people are showing up. That is not the only important thing that matters. There is a whole history that long precedes people between Mexico and the United States. And to reduce what we just heard, 10 minutes of that, to are you going to the border, to me strikes me personally as missing a huge opportunity. We have this huge opportunity to understand the reasons why the things that preceded that happening. Let me go through some of the things that the vice president said. And I think this is an important line that she had. She said, most people, and this is true because anyone who's ever lived anywhere knows this, do not want to leave home. When people flee their home, they are either fleeing harm, says the vice president, or they know that to stay at home means that they will be unable to meet the basic needs of their family. People want to stay home. She talked about the pride that people have in their homes. Their homes are a history. They are the link to their family, to their grandparents, their great grandparents. There's a whole history. We talk about Guatemala, the great Maya of Guatemala, 70% of that population, who were basically enslaved on plantations by the United Fruit Company. Why are people from there coming here? Because the hope was deleted from much of that region by us, by things that the United States and our corporate interests did that preceded people suddenly. People aren't just showing up here because they want to go and live in Texas and not be able to vote if they ever can become a citizen. OK, I, I, I just feel like I have to say that I'm going to throw that in. Let me go through a couple of the things that the vice president talked about. She talked about some of the agreements that she was able to reach while she was um, in these two countries in Guatemala. She said that they are going to create an anti-corruption task force because one of the outgrowths of our policies, uh, including overthrowing the democratically elected government that was in place for 10 years, in 1954, around the same time we were doing this in Iran, we were overthrowing the government there because they wanted to, you know, do their own thing and not be subject to our economic needs. We overthrew that government. We threw it out. The CIA threw them out. They've had a corruption problem ever since. There's deep corruption in the region, in part because of our policy. The outgrowth of our policies had an impact. And we need to remember that and know that history before we approach telling people don't leave. Um, she said they're going to form an anti-corruption task force. They're going to create a task force on smuggling and trafficking, which is very important. A lot of people are trafficked and fall into a lot of dangers when they're making these long journeys. Uh, a, young, uh, a, a task force on young women uh, empowerment, um, $40 million being put into that to help empower young women, particularly young women entrepreneurs. $48 million for affordable housing and agribusiness. This is very important. These are largely agricultural economies. And if we can help people to actually make money and earn money and be able to earn a living safely without being set upon by gangs and uh, set upon by criminals and uh, caught up in the sort of war on drugs, which, again, also is related to the needs of, of people here and the desire of people here to do drugs, right, or addiction, 
we can try to help people stay home. Because again, people want to stay home. In Mexico, she talked about creating um, uh, partnerships, economic partnerships, because of the linkage between the U.S. and the Mexican economies. They are very linked together. They are, uh, Canada and Mexico are two largest trading partners. So creating some kind of relationships to try to increase the economic stability of Mexico, which is another driver of people leaving, dealing with drugs and smuggling. Obviously, our opioid uh, addiction problem in this country, a very, very big deal that needs to be dealt with across borders, and $130 million for labor reform. This is huge, very important, dealing with labor issues in Mexico that also make it easier for people to work, earn money, and earn a living there. So that is part of what happened. Let me go to New York Congressman Adriano Espaillat. He's the vice chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus. He's the only former undocumented uh, my, uh, immigrant in Congress. And also Maria Hinojosa, anchor and executive producer of Latino USA and founder and president of Futura Media. I want to apologize for my lengthy rant and go to you, Congressman, first. Your thoughts on what we heard from the vice president. Uh, right on target, Joy, I think that uh, we have to take a deep dive to find the root causes. Migration is not an easy subject. It's a complicated and complex one. It involves environmental issues. It involves violence. It involves the history, as you well put out. Uh, and ever since, not since uh, JFK's 1961 Alliance for Progress, have we even attempted to take a deep dive. We went in there and we reaped the fruits of capitalism, uh, as we called it. And now and we, we abandoned the place and we call ourselves the leaders of the hemisphere. But in fact, we are not providing the leadership that these countries are looking for. So I think that her going there and taking uh, the first step, take a deep dive and find out what must be done to build a public-private partnerships to make sure that climate issues are addressed by young people, that women's issues are addressed. Nobody likes to leave home. Nobody likes to leave a great beach, a great uh, palm tree uh, for cold weather. You know, people want to stay with their families, uh, but uh, it requires investment. And you're talking about over 80, over $80 million that she talked about uh, uh, in this first trip. So this is, I think, a good first step. Uh, for our country to take a deep dive and really understand what's forcing a mom to travel thousands of miles with her small children to the border. What's, what's forcing a dad that sees her young adolescent male uh, son uh, get threatened by a gang and tell his young son, go save your life, go to the United States of America. What is happening there that we can uh, uh, really address? I think this is a, a great first step. Yeah. And uh, Maria, uh, my friend, listen, we uh, yesterday uh, I was moved by your post. You posted on social media your visceral reaction to the soundbite. I think this is one of the other challenges. You know this as well as I do as a journalist, that we get it's caught up in a soundbite and there's not a lot of context to it. Uh, what we got mostly from the Guatemala trip was don't come. And that was sort of what it was boiled down to. I think this was a little bit more contextual. and We got a little bit more of the vice president's thoughts. So I want to let you react to what you heard uh, this evening. I think that's probably because there was extraordinary blowback by hearing the vice president, daughter of immigrants, say to refugees, don't come. So I think there was a pause and just like, OK, wait a second. Legally, refugees can come and should come because I don't know. That's basically uh, the Statue of Liberty stones throw from where I at. That's kind of what she's saying. That's what we advertise. OK, yes, Joy, you're right. Today was better. I'm very happy to hear that there's going to be such extraordinary investment. Of course, when I wrote down in my notes, I said to the congressman, why would a woman leave? Well, if the United States is going to fund the police that are part of the uh, cycle of violence and the impunity, and the United States is going to say, we're going to help by now helping security, that does not help the woman who is a victim of extraordinary domestic abuse. Femicide is what they're escaping. Uh, and so for me, Joy, you know, uh, yes, yesterday was a gut punch. It was like, OK, here we go. Here we go with the Democratic Party. Certainly it's not like having uh, white supremacists in the White House. But this was a disheartening, it's a disheartening moment yesterday and today. More hopefulness, but we need much more context. 
Yeah, I mean, we have a long relationship and it's got to become a lot more integral because we do need to, you know, try to in improve the economies. If we can do more to improve the economies and to improve the sense of stability. But yet we understand a lot of folks down there have a lot of doubt, you know, based on the history. As Jose Antonio Vargas, our mutual friend, says they are here because we were there.